Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we're fox driving with Paul Childerley, plus Byron Pace reviews a thermal imager from Pulsar. Basically, we're out today doing some uh, fox control. Um, we plan on driving some of the, the woods and maybe a couple of the bits of second year um, game cover, um, just to try and control some of the foxes. Uh, it's another like way you can tr control fox, especially this time of year. We're in the spring. Uh, there's a few cubs around, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a good good method to uh, get those ones you can't get when you're when you're lamping. And the father, Martin Childerley. Um, Scott Shuckford, who works for me, head keeper, and Will Hogan, who uh, is just finished keeping, but he'll probably get back into it in the next couple of years. Right, let's go. There's normally one or two guns stand forward. Um, it's like specific areas where you know the foxes, you know where the foxes run through. Um, tuck in there, get real quiet, get ready, and uh, a couple of beaters will bring it through. You don't need a lot of beaters, but. Normally what happens is they fire a few shots in the, in the thick brambles, um, places where they think they lie, and uh, we uh, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll sneak forward and, and we'll, we'll um, control them too that way. I've got this new uh, deer hunter smock. Actually, I, I think the pattern is absolutely brilliant. I've been out stalking this morning with it, and uh, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, so we've got that, and uh, I've, got, I've got a face veil, which I'll stick on, and, and, a, and a cap as well, just to minimise, so like, you know, uh, any visual from uh, from the fox, and then we got um, we got the new Brown in Maxus Auto Three Shot. Um, yes, it's well, we'll see what it's like. I haven't actually personally used one before, so I'll, I'll give that a test today. Um, it comes up well, so there's no excuses so far. I've got a tight choke, and I do like shooting a tight, tighter choke when we're shooting foxes. So you've got a bit of distance. Um, when you're shooting a bit of distance, you can you can actually you know get a good pattern and um, do the job. And then we're shooting um, Alpha Max BBs, uh, Magnum load, 42 grams. Stuff that do the business when, when you know when you got a fox out at like 35, 40 yards, you know you're going to kill it and do the job. And obviously having three shots, um, you know, you should be with the first, but you know you got a bit of backup, so all good. You know we've done it a few, a lot of times in the same places. So you know where the, where the foxes are, uh, and then you know. Whoever's doing the beating, you know, know, know the places where they need to put more pressure on to get the foxes to run forward. Um, sometimes they nip out the side, so you, you know, fire a shot out in front of them, even if it's like a long, long distance away, just to try and push them, turn them back into the drive. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the key to it, I would say. This time of year, birds are nesting. Um, the lambs, like I say, the lambs have been out. Um, we've been losing odd lamb, doing quite a lot of wild birds on this area this year, so uh, it's quite important to get some of these foxes down. Tricky place here. Um, we got a stream down through here, an old duck pond in here, and uh, we try and nip underneath this grass and across a paddock here, or back to a big wood on this right hand side. Um, very close, difficult shooting. See what we can do. Fox driving may not be as common as it once was, but in areas with lampshire foxes or where the terrain makes lamping a no-go, a well-run fox drive is just the thing. It's, it's, it is actually a bit of responsibility at the front because you know you've got a bit of pressure on because you know we, we need to get these foxes down in this area. So um, yeah, it is literally keep really still, um, notice everything that's coming towards you, listen listen out for. Um, the signs when they're coming, you know, the cock pheasant cocking up, um, blackbirds, you know, chattering, all those things just tell you where, where he's cooking, because he won't hear him coming, he would be just sneak out the side door and, and then he'd be in trouble, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, he will be. A small but experienced team of beaters works the line, and Paul waits patiently to see what'll come his way. 
it's not long before he's rewarded with some quick reactions coming to his aid. Yeah, great. Basically a... Uh, <laughs> just where I said it come through, come through to this gap, goes into this grass paddock here. I've been having a bit of problem with the lambs here, so we knew there was a vixen here somewhere. Um, yeah, and she just basically just turned up there, but I can only just see the top part of her head. Um, so just uh, not normally where I would shoot, shoot a fox, I normally go for the biggest area, easiest kill, but I um, basically headshot this one, so yeah, good, good uh, perfect start, one for one. got to be prepared because you see that vixen come there and she was there and all I had to do was up and bang rather than the whole movement. She didn't know I was there. She was looking out in front and I just basically went up, bang. So, another, you know, not telling people how to suck eggs, but you know, these things do help when you, when you need the results. And now it's hot, so strip down time. Right, let's go. We get, well, we'll walk from here then. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Eager for more, we head off to the second beat, where Paul is soon at work checking the conditions are correct. You can't leave anything to chance on a fox drive. You need a rigorous plan supported by the correct equipment. Paul's confident his Browning Maxis, loaded with Ely, Alpha Max, will do the job. Oh, the wind's bad, bad on this bit. But it's the best way to drive this bit of woodland because they they don't, they come up here a bit better on this particular block because it just spreads out to a big massive area where it's just narrow like narrow area where they, they like channel through. Um, the wind's a little bit wrong, so we're gonna come on the bottom side just to cut it across slightly. Um, so right, okay, I'll give them a call and get them started okay, driving. Ready. Okay, one well, two. And we're off. With the ground more open here, Paul should have slightly more time to pick his shots. As expected, we've soon got sight of wildlife, but this is somewhat bigger than a fox and provides a worthwhile distraction as we wait for today's quarry. Back to the job in hand. Paul spots a flash of red up ahead. It's a running fox coming his way, and he's soon ready to take it down with one well-placed shot. Okay, two shots. It's a successful conclusion, but Paul's expecting some grief for taking two shots to get there. We'll save his blushes by only showing a replay of the hit. Go on then, here's the miss again. Better late than never. It's on the ground. Very good. Yeah. If I just do another headshot close, it'd just be boring. So I thought a bit more suspense. <laughs> Did it get away? No, no chance. Well, we was debating, we had to use nine shots from the supply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might laugh at me putting a blue glove on. You think you're Michael Jackson, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> but a bit of hygiene goes a long way. Every fox counts, so that makes this another successful drive. The boys stop to have lunch and to share a few foxing stories before heading out once more. As we follow Paul to the next peg, it's clear that miss is still playing on his mind. I, normally I would have shot him coming at me, to be fair. Um, but I left him because he was coming flat out. Might as well make it the easiest shot possible. And obviously the easiest shot possible, you, you uh, mess up. But luckily, uh, <laughs> the Brennan recycled and we were on for the second shot. And yeah, no problem at all. Um, dead as a nit, headshot. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, two out of two, so going well. Hopefully we'll get, get a couple more in the bag in a minute. Um, basically, we're going to... We're going to drive these uh, this second year wild bird mix down. Um, these foxes love lying in the air um, on, a, on a good bright sunny day. Um, obviously the whole point of having these wild bird mixes is for wild birds, um, whether it's ground nesting birds or game birds or obviously uh, your uh, skylarks and everything else. So um, and obviously it's a perfect place for a fox to live. 
um, food on the doorstep and a uh, nice bit of cover. Um, so what you're going to do is bring this down. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll park the vehicle on the left hand side to cover. Um, so if he does want to break out that side, um, should see it and come back in towards us. Um, but generally they tend to stick next to the hedges um, if they don't know you're in, 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 the, in the front. And uh, they just should just creep down or, or bolt out the end here. And uh, we shall uh, get some results, hopefully. After another brief distraction, we're once again getting stuck into the task of controlling Charlie. And just a few minutes into the drive, Paul's reactions are called on once again. Well, that was fast. Um, big dog fox come out. They pushed him um, a fox in full speed, that was. From the second year cow, and they actually bumped him up. He was just in front of them, and he got on the feed ride track in the middle and he just come full tilt, straight at the end. Um, I don't think he could run any faster if he could, and uh, missed with the first, caught me sleeping, I think, and uh, yeah, bowled him over the second, perfect, yeah. Well done. Good result yeah, on that one. That. Um, big dog fox, um, you know, big dog fox like that do, you know, do a lot of, a lot of damage in an area. Um, big rangey fox, he's probably got a big range as well, covering a big area. That brings up a vulpine hat trick for Paul. Three foxes are a good tally for any predator control session. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, um, he kicked up a cock pheasant, so I knew something was coming. But I think he was going to come that fast. Yeah. You missed him, you did you? I totally missed him first shot, absolutely miles away. Well, we've uh, had three foxes today, uh, a few, few pigeons and a few jackdaws and uh, some bits and pieces. But yeah, we had uh, two dog foxes and a vixen. Uh, it's been a good day. The, uh, the Maxis has performed well. I've double barreled a couple of them, but you know, that's, that's uh, user error, not nothing to do with the gun. And they're uh, really pleased with the, uh, the cartridge as well. They, they, they really did the trick. So um, all in all, it's been a good day. Thoroughly enjoyable and uh, yeah, it's a worthwhile exercise. So very pleased. Paul Childerly finally getting it together there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Matthew Beal of Hyams High School won the Clive Stanton Memorial Trophy at the British Schools and Young Shots Championship at West Midland Shooting Ground on Saturday. Students from as far as Scotland, Cornwall and Norfolk made the trip, but Matthew Beal hit 44 out of 50 to win by three targets on the red course, where the top school was Millfield. The blue course saw Zachariah Lewis from Millfield's B team finish on top with 42, while Jess Allen won the inaugural Shotgun and Chelsea Bun Club Award as the top lady. On the black course, Max Dolphin from Ashfold School led the competition and his team to a double victory and won the inaugural Basque Award for under-14s. Read a full report in the next issue of Clay Shooting, out next week. The air gun licensing debate in Scotland has gone ahead, without crucial evidence. Basque submitted a Freedom of Information request asking for the missing air gun crime statistics from last year. We've been told those figures will be a year late. Basque said the absence of the most recent evidence is unacceptable. But MSPs didn't seem to think so and went ahead with agreeing the general principles of the bill. There's a new drive to tackle rural crime and you're encouraged to provide case studies. The National Rural Crime Network is asking for anyone with an interest in countryside sports and the rural economy to contribute their experiences to a new online resource. Head online to share your research, submit case studies or write blog articles on the subject of rural crime. Visit the address on screen now for more information. Staying in Scotland, it's emerged that some shooters face waits of nine months in getting renewals processed. Police Scotland, which is currently cutting its firearms licensing team from 34 to 14, appears to have let a large backlog of applications and renewals build up. Basque Scotland's Nicole Hamilton said the Scottish Government is ignoring the facts and ignoring the evidence when it comes to the enforcement of firearms laws. Keep up with all your firearm news in Sporting Rifle magazine. And finally, the BBC is in the dock for misquoting the Prime Minister on fox hunting. In an interview, Andrew Marr said David Cameron had described hunting as his favourite sport in an article for the Countryside Alliance. This caused an inevitable storm on social media, but Marr soon had to apologise after it emerged the quote was false. 
Facing claims of BBC bias, Ma said the error was cock-up, not conspiracy. That was the Shooting Show News. This is the Pulsar Apex. To look at it, it's pretty similar in shape to their N750 night vision scope, uh, but this is a, a very, very different bit of technology. Most people now have had a chance to see some thermal. I've certainly reviewed some on the shooting show before, and you can go back and have a look at those links to see how the technology has progressed. Uh, this is very similar ability to their handheld viewers which really if you're going to have either a night vision scope or indeed a thermal scope it goes hand in hand with actually having a viewer uh, it makes life a lot easier if you're going for the complete covert shooting if you can spot with a handheld device and then get on top of the scope or whether that be thermal or night vision on your rifle today i've got this mounted on a cz uh, Scott Country also supplied this Weaver rail on the top here, which is from Hawk. And I have to admit, uh, they don't cost a huge amount of money, these, but it, it really does work. It feels like a, a pretty um, solid bit of kit for the money, and it mounts this thermal scope perfectly. This looks a little bit ungainly on the side here. I've got the external battery pack attached, which gives it a, a tremendous life. I'll see exactly what that is once I have a chance to use it uh, for an extended period. Uh, but this cable work here is so that I can attach the uh, recorder for the video output in here so that I can show you uh, what's going on. This is a, a very compact little recorder uh, from Newton and uh, we'll see how the, the footage turns out on that but it's a lot more compact than the recorders I've had before and I'm just going, it can be attached to a weaver rail, it's got a little foot on it here. I don't have a spare one because of course I've got the external battery pack but I'll tape this on the top here and it's very simple to um, operate basically press one button little blue light comes on you know that it's on you press another button it records press it again it stops simple as that getting to the unit itself and looking through we've got a very clean uncluttered view there's a little bit of information at the bottom apart from the time you can see what the digital magnification is the unit comes standard optical at two times so the digital magnification allows you to go from 1 to 2 incrementally, 0.1 at a time, taking you to a total of 4 times magnification. It doesn't seem like a huge amount, but I think that the ability that uh, this unit and the thermal handheld unit gives you to stalk in at night completely undetected 4 times should be ample for the kind of ranges that you're going to be able to shoot, and importantly, successfully identify with these units and four times magnification with this is probably going to tie in quite nicely to those ranges. The magnification is changed very simply via this button on the side here. You click it three times to get from contrast and brightness onto magnification and a nice little added touch here instead of it just being one click suddenly from one to two you can actually vary it. So if you have it on magnification and you twizzle the knob, then you can zoom in and out 1.1 all the way up to 1.91, eventually getting to 2. Focus is very easily adjusted via this lever on the front here. You simply grab that and twist it one way or the other, and that will bring your focus into line so that it's nice and crisp. There is uh, also a ring on the back, and that allows you to get your crosshair nice and focused on your screen as well. Brightness and contrast, I've said this before, it's important to get that right because it makes a big difference in terms of the clarity of your image. A few other cool functions of this, uh, you've got multiple crosshairs that you can choose from. A few cool things to note about what this scope can do. If you go into the menu settings, you have a chance to select the mode, 
which tailors it to the landscape. If you've got a landscape that's got a lot of rocks in it, you put it on the rock landscape, and then that just helps the unit do its automatic calibration with knowing that information. And the little noise that you hear every now and then while I'm doing this review is the auto calibration just adjusting uh, the image that you see depending on what it's looking at so that you can get the contrast in heat between different objects. That calibration can be turned uh, to manual if you don't want it to continually do that. You also have a choice of setting different zero points and saving them down. Uh, it's the standard uh, one shot zero that we saw with the N750. You basically take a shot, move a little cross in here where your bullet actually landed, keeping the central crosshair where you were aiming. You reset it and everything calibrates. Within one or two shots, you can normally be bang on the money. Saves a lot of ammo, a lot of hassle, and it's, it's a brilliant system. You can obviously change the color of your crosshair at the moment. I've got it set to white. Uh, I think that works better when you're looking at white heat. And one really cool thing that this scope can do is if you set PIP to on, uh, what PIP is, is it gives you a little screen in the top of your screen, which is zoomed in. So you have your full field of vision with your crosshair, but you also have a little screen up the top zoomed in with another crosshair on it, which allows you to take a uh, shot zoomed in without actually having to zoom while you're operating the scope. That's a real neat bit of functionality. This unit comes in just under £4,000, so it still is a fair amount of money, but the technology has come so far in the last couple of years, you couldn't even get a handheld device for £4,000 not that long ago. So I think that this particular uh, unit really is a leap forward, and at that sort of money, it has to be one of the, the market leaders in terms of what it offers. The zeroing has worked like a charm. What I used to do with thermal scopes is use some sort of heat source at the far end in order for you to actually be able to see and zero it. Like uh, one of those peel open hand warmers, that's what I used last time in Sky. I found, however, if you print some nice big thick black lines on a piece of paper, like the diamonds that I've got printed here, and you've got a bit of a sunny day. I mean, it's not that warm, but the sun is heating uh, the black lines. You will actually be able to pick that up as a heat source, and you can pick it up pretty well, as you should be able to see um, from the footage that I've taken. And a little bonus on top of that is if you leave the center of it white, you can actually pick up the heat from the bullet hole. So initially, I was zeroing at 25, uh, meters. I've moved it up to 100 now. You can't see the, the heat from the bullet hole at 100, but at 25 you can see it, which allows you to um, adjust the scope uh, in terms of tweaking after your one shot zero exactly where that bullet hole is, which is perfect. I brought it to this bit of ground I've got here, which has rabbits out at all manner of ranges and really lets me get to grips with the capabilities in terms of identifying heat sources and being able to ID what you're looking at. I've been quite successfully uh, shooting rabbits out to 100 yards, as you'll be able to see uh, from the footage that I've taken through the thermal unit. I could very clearly pick up rabbit heat sources at 300 meters, and even 400 meters you were able to pick up a heat source on a very small rabbit. At 300 you could make out that they were rabbits when they started to move, but you wouldn't really be able to positively identify it safely. At 200, you certainly could. Uh, you wouldn't have been able to shoot rabbits at 200, I, I wouldn't have thought, just because of the magnification limitation. But out at 150, it certainly was possible. And like I say, at 100, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. So I would think with a, a fox-sized quarry, you should be able to ID and take a shot at 200 meters and that is absolutely ample for anything that you're going to be doing at night this is covert shooting so you should be able to get fairly close to whatever it is that you're after uh, this unit has impressed me i'm very much looking forward to having a play with this in a few months time once the fox cubs are kicking about and i'll be able to make some really good use of this technology uh, but for now 
that's it. I just wonder how long it's going to take before something trumps this. And knowing how fast the technology moves in night vision and thermal, I can't imagine it's going to be too long. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.